we move on to 11.3 now, which is dealing with integration of trigonometric functions. So our objectives that we're going to be looking at are using those six new differentiation rules that we just learned in the previous chapter to help us identify some integration rules. And what I do want to remind you of is that integration is just differentiation working backwards. So if you differentiate something, there's a way of undoing what you've just done. There's a way of rewinding it. That process is called integration. The other thing then, of course, that we're going to do is use these new integration rules along with old ones to do some problems. So I just want to quickly remind you differentiation versus integration. First of all, differentiation is finding rates of changes at instantaneous points. So that's what we call tangents. So if you have a certain function, you can find the rate of change or the, whoops, or the tangent at instant points. Versus integration. Integration would be the process of finding process of finding the area underneath the curve. So the area of a bounded region. Right? So those the, those these things are completely kind of separate. That's supposed to be an N. Um, Though these are completely separate, they're completely different things that these two things do, or these two processes do, they are related in that integration is the rewind of differentiation. Okay, so integration undoes differentiation, and I guess you could look at differentiation as undoing integration as well. Alright, so um, these are those six new rules that we have learned, and what I want to come out of this, I'm going to kind of look at this one in depth real quick. Um, remember, if we had a function y equals sine of x, okay, and we went ahead and said that we wanted to differentiate that function, so I'm going to go ahead and differentiate both sides, what we come up with is dy dx is equal to, in this case, what we found was the derivative of sine of x is just equal to cosine of x. Okay, so that was the rule that we established. Um, there is a way of marking and stamping this as something that's been differentiated. Um, it's not only this, but we had what we call a differential equation. Remember this? And this right here just completely stamps it as this is some sort of um, rate of change of y with respect to a rate of change of x. It's an equation that, that relates dy with dx. Um, so if that's so stu uh, so clearly stamped like that, what we could do is undo it. We could rewind it. Okay. So in this case, that would undo the the differentiation of y. We would just get y is equal to, and then the integration of cosine of x dx. This is when we undo the fact that this has been differentiated. So we'd resort back to sine of x. Right. So what we have just found here is that the integration of cosine of x dx, this is one of our first rules that we're going to come across, is equal to sine of x. And then don't forget when we're integrating these, which are called indefinite integrals because there's no lower bounds and upper bounds, we need a plus c here, an integration constant. Okay, so that's that. Um, this one is a little bit different. Uh, remember that if we were to derive cosine of x, we would get negative sine of x. So I do want to say that we're going to focus on what if we wanted to integrate just sine of x. So if you were to do that, we're not just going to get cosine of x because this thing is negative and this is not. What's going to happen when I rewind this is this would become negated, so negative cosine of x. So I am just going to list these off to you. Um, so what this originates from, um, it's not because of this differentiation process, when we differentiate tangent of x, what we can do is we can integrate secant squared of x. So if you ever come across secant squared of x, whoops, dx, sorry, I forgot my dx here. You need some sort of uh, uh, marking of what you're different integrating with respect to. So here I'm integrating secant squared of x with respect to x. Um, I know I can do that because we had this differentiation process, so this would just become tangent of x plus c. 
So there's another rule. Uh, another rule that we have here is we can go ahead, if, this, if we ever came across a differential cosecant x cotangent x dx and we wanted to integrate it, we completely could. And it would just be this cosecant of x. But it is going to be negated because what I'm doing here is I'm integrating the positive value of it. And uh, when we differentiated, we would get a negative. So I do have to negate that plus c. And uh, I'll just keep going down the line here. That's going to get a secant of x plus c. And then finally, this one right here. get us negative cotangent of x plus c. Okay, so there are all of our new integration rules. So these are the red flags that you're going to be looking for when you are integrating. Uh, those are the ones that should kind of ring some sort of bell to you. All right, here is the list of the old rules and now also our new rules. I want you to keep in mind that down here I have sine of u du because what we will be coming across is using u substitution. So not only are we going to have something like integrating sine of just x, it might be something like sine of 2x. And actually this is one of your homework problems. It's number 11. Okay. So here's the thing, we don't have a rule where there's some sort of 2 out front here. Um, so this is where you might want to say, all right, here I'm taking the sign of this composition function. So u substitution would be required here. This is where you're going to want to take out the composition that's involved in this function. So we have u equals 2x. Okay. So then I'm going to go ahead and write sine of u and the other thing that you then hope to d get out is this dx so that's where we do have differentiation because I have this equation that links u and x together but now I want an equation that links du and dx together because I want this out and luckily we do because when we differentiate u okay, we will just get 2 here and that leads us to being able to write a differential just multiply dx to both sides we get du is equal to 2 times dx now, I don't have a 2 dx in my equation, but I could easily divide both sides by 2. Therefore, 1 half du is equal to dx, because now this dx can go out, this 1 half du can go in. Okay, so here, right here, I put u sub or I used u substitution, and u substitution is so very important in integration because once again we're so limited by the rules that we have. So I'm going to now be able to integrate this whole thing, um, where I can say, all right, let's pull out this one half because we do have this scalar rule. All right, and now I have exactly this down here. So this is all equal to 1 half times and then negative cosine of u. I'm going to plug back in my 2x and then plus c. So the best way to write this is negative 1 half cosine 2x plus c. All right. So I just want to emphasize that um, I can't, I don't have to be in this video this time because I don't need as many as much room because I don't have as many rules when it comes to integration. That's kind of a positive and a negative. I mean, there's not as many things to keep track of. However, um, it's it makes it really limited because we don't have the product or a quotient rule. If you ever had the integration of something like g of x times f of x, um, dx, something like that, you don't have any way of breaking this up or we don't have something like the product rule where we have in differentiation where you can take this times the derivative of this plus this times the derivative of this. Integration is so limited. I can't say that enough, obviously. Okay, so um, you just have to make sure that you're not making things up, that you're matching the patterns to one of these in this list. Okay, so we are going to do some more problems. All right, I'm also, um, by the way, the number that I just did was number 11, and now I'm going to be doing number 15. All 
Alright, so this one is a bit tricky because you do see, first of all, multiplication of two functions and it's not that you could just take the integration of this times the integration of that. We don't have that rule like I was saying. What you are probably naturally going to look at are these ones down here. But the problem is, none of these patterns actually will match up to this. And it will take a little bit of further analysis of that. If you were to look at something like this, you see my sine of 2x. If you were to let u be 2x, that'd be fine. But then when you were trying to fill in this du, um, 2x, if that were going to be my u, then du would just be 2. And so this cosine of 2x is throwing off everything. Um, same thing here, not going to work. None of these are even sine and cosine, so none of those will work. So through a process of elimination, these are out. I can go up here. This is just if you were to have a kind of scalar multiple. I can rule this rule out. We're not going to be using this. We're definitely not adding functions, not going to be using this. I can rule this out. Um, this is just if we were having a constant, so like a 2 or a 3, definitely not it. Um, I'm going to hold on to this. This might not seem recognizable at first. This was the one hint that we are going to use. This one is 1 over some sort of function. Um, we don't have a quotient here, so I'm going to rule that one out, and this one's definitely not it either. This is the only one that we could possibly use, and though you might not be able to recognize it at first, I'm going to just throw this out there. Um, you are going to be hoping that you can turn one of these whole functions into your u. So I'm just going to do that right now. u is equal to sine of 2x. And I hope as soon as you do that, um, through this process of elimination, you come to this and say, well, I guess I can maybe try to do something with this. And what you're hoping for is now if you were to drive this function, this what I'm letting be u, that you're going to get that. And I think as soon as you try that, uh, you're going to see that that you've nailed it. So du dx is going to be equal to, oops, that's kind of ugly, sorry. Um, but when you derive your u with respect to x, this is sine of 2x, so you have to go back to your differentiation rules. And if you differentiate sine, which hopefully we got a lot of practice in that in the last section, sine is one of the easy ones, it's just cosine um, of that function, but then don't forget you're going to have to go out and multiply by the inner function's derivative, so by 2. Alright, so I'm going to rewrite this. du is equal to 2 cosine of 2x dx, okay, by just multiplying dx, so I've written it as a differential. And I'm even going to go further because here I can see it. Here is that cosine of 2x dx, but I don't have that 2 there, so I'm going to divide both sides by 2. In other words, multiply by one half. So here I'm going to get one half du is equal to cosine of 2x dx. Right? So this is out, this is in, because cosine of 2x dx is equal to one half du. And we have related du and dx and what's attached to it through this differentiation. So once again, yes, it does become confusing because when you are integrating, sometimes you do have to differentiate in there. All right, so um, I'm going to go back to my purple. Um, this right here, I'm integrating my sine of 2x, which that is what we have put in as our u. And oops, this is u to the first, technically. And I'm going to put in my 1 half du. Okay. So here now we've gotten it to a point where now actually we can use that scalar rule. We have that one half in there. Okay, and here we just have u to the first. So this is that whole process of it's the anti-differentiation. Instead of pulling down our exponent and subtracting by one, I'm going to add one and divide by that new. So it's going to be one half times and then one half u to the second because I added 1, I got 2 up here, and then I divided by 2, which is the same thing as 1 half multiplied by it. So that du does drop out. Remember, when we integrate, that um, derivative is going to drop out. So all said and done, this is going to be 1 fourth. My u is sine, whoops, sine of 2u, and all of that squared. The best way to write this is 1 fourth sine squared of 2u, and then don't forget your plus c. Alright, so that's it. I am going to do now a definite integration, so I'm going to do numbers. 
So here is where they define the upper and lower bound. So the thing about this is we don't need a plus C anymore, I know that. And remember, this is specifically you finding the area underneath the, the bounded region. So I do want to do a quick sketch of this, very, very sketchy. Um, but here it's going to be the sine graph. Here's my And here's my center line. So we would be starting at the center line, going up, down, down, up. So here is my, my graph. What I'm asking for is, what is the area underneath this curve and then bounding um, by the x-axis? So I need to find that area right there. And you can automatically see that it's more, it's going to be more than pi, okay? So more than 3.14 um, because there's this additional curved area up there. But how you would actually go about doing this then is um, I do have things piece by piece being added. So fortunately, we do have a rule for that. It's right here. So you can just integrate this piece by piece. Plus Okay, so this right here is just a constant that's going to be taking on this rule right here. So I'm going to be able to say this would be me um, going ahead and just, because I'm integrating with respect to x, this is technically x to the 0 right now, so we're going to add 1 to the exponent and divide by 1, we're going to get x. Okay, and then pi to 0, and then plus, this right here is the integration of sine of x, so go down to our rules down here, and this is just going to be negative cosine of x and then from 0 to pi because we don't need that plus c. So here, this is where we need the fundamental theorem of calculus. So what we're going to be doing is this is our antiderivative that we've gotten um, through this integration. An antiderivative is a um, result of differentiation, I'm sorry, of integration. So what you can do is just plug in your pi minus your 0 that's going to be this right here because you plug in your pi, you plug in your zero into this function that we've gotten. And then plus, here we have, I'm going to plug in negative cosine of pi minus negative cosine of zero because I plugged in that upper and lower bounds. So this is easy, it's just pi plus. So now you do have to evaluate what is negative cosine of pi. Looking on your unit circle, what is cosine of pi? Well, it's negative one, so this right here would be negative, negative one, so positive one, minus, and then negative cosine of zero, here's our angle zero, so that's gonna be uh, negative one because that is what the cosine or the x movement is, the horizontal movement. So what I get here is pi plus, here we have 1 uh, minus negative 1, which is just going to be 2 in the end. So there we have it.